if you look at man from creation, you observe that you never see man independent. No man is ever independent. Something always led man to do what he does from creation. Something always led man to do what he does. Even if it is invisible, you know, even if it is invisible that cannot be seen, something is always leading a man to do what he does. I have seen people say, I am a man of my own. That is not true. Even that statement is influenced by somebody. Every human being is a product of influence. Every human being. There is no independent human being who just decided how to live life. Somebody influenced the decision. Somebody introduced the idea. And you know, sometimes somebody can be far away from where you are and by the things he said to you can be controlling your life for another 30 years. He's not with you. But he planted ideas into your head and you're running with those ideas for 30 years of your life. Why? Because human beings are products of influence. Everybody is influenced somewhere. It's not in man to direct his steps. Something is directing him. You know, every man is a product of somebody's influence. Something always tells you what to do. So at each point of your life, something is leading you. In Genesis chapter 3, the devil spoke. And man followed the devil. Genesis 3. The devil spoke. And man followed the devil. Because every man is led by something. Every human being. In Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Brother Paul says. Wherefore as by one man. Sin entered into the world. And death by sin. Romans chapter 5 verse number 12. Put it up for me. Wherefore as by one man. Sin entered into the world. And death by sin. And so death pass upon all men for that all have seen. Give me the next verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Next verse. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not seen after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. In Ephesians chapter 2, it also explains to us how men are controlled naturally. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 and we shall read to verse 3. Ephesians, and you are the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Next verse. Wherein in time past, he's talking to believers now. In time past, you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh. So there's a spirit that is walking in the children of disobedience to the gospel. Everybody is under a particular influence. Believers are led by the spirit or believers are led by what people around them influence them to do. Unbelievers are led by demons. They are led by demons. A man that is not born again is under the influence of the devil. You walked according to the course of this world. The spirit that now walketh. So there's a walking of the spirit of the devil in the children of disobedience to the gospel of salvation. Man does not have the capacity to lead himself. Something always leads men all the time. All the time. Not just some of the time. All the time. All the time. Something leads people all the time. So therefore man is not self-propelled. It's not a self-propelled being. He is always propelled to do what he does. Someone says, I believe man has free will. Oh yes, man has a free will. Oh yes, that's what makes you a man. Every man has a free will. But that free will is independent, is dependent, sorry, on choices. The free will of man is dependent on choices and those choices are influenced by men. Man has a free will, but that free will is influenced by choices. And the choices of man's free will are influenced by men. Therefore, every man is a product of influence. 
There is no man that just, you know, woke up by himself and just decided what to do. Every man. You are born as a little child in a home with parents. If they are not your parents, you are born in a home with parents of somebody. No child just grew alone. Orphanage home, there are, there are parents also there. Nobody just grew by himself. Even on the streets, there are parents. Among area boys, there are parents. Even in prison, there are parents. They are the ones that will remove all your clothes and ask you for rent on arrival. And then they start influencing you. You got born in the home, you start getting influence from your father. If you're close to your father, if you're close to your mother, you start getting influence from your mother. All the things you want to do in life are things your mother exposed you to or things your father exposed you to or things you were exposed to in school. Even your choice of career was influenced by somebody. You saw an engineer and you admired engineering and you found out you had the capacity for engineering and you became an engineer. Nobody just came out and said, no, this is how I will be. No, every human being was influenced to make the decisions they made that ultimately determined the outcome of their life every human being. Now follow me, I'm going somewhere with this. It's important for me to settle that so that you know that you, you don't have any doubt in your mind as to whether people influenced you or not. Now, man has to be led because that is who man is. So look at yourself. Every decision you made either before you got saved or after you got saved was influenced. Including your coming to service today. That you're in church today in spite of the rain. Some of you beat the rain and came. Your clothes got soaked, but you don't care because what your spirit is about to get is more important than your clothes. You inconvenienced yourself and came out. And you're seated in church right now because something influenced you to get to the service this morning. There's nobody that just does things. There's an influence that makes you do what you do. Man cannot produce thoughts of his own. Thoughts, thoughts are influenced. You are thinking what you are thinking because somebody planted the idea there. You are thinking what you are thinking because you saw something. You are thinking what you are thinking because you heard something. So your thoughts are planted. If you don't admit that on time, then something else is guiding you right now. If you argue with me right now that thoughts are not planted, that thinking that you are thinking to argue me with, somebody gave you that thought. Am I teaching here? Yeah. <laughs> that you're even arguing with me is because somebody gave you that idea. So it's still an influence. Every human being is a product of influence. Are you still in the building? Please, this is very important. Now, <clears throat> have you observed that in Genesis chapter 11, the whole world came together to build a tower that will get to heaven? God said, these folks, nothing can restrain them from what they have imagined to do. God acknowledged that these guys, what they are deciding to do, nothing can stop it. Now, God is there. He doesn't want them to do it, but they are going to do it anyway. God didn't want them to build that tower. That tower was not God's plan for man. Babel, it wasn't God's plan. God didn't want it, but they made up their mind to do it anyway, and they started until they were interrupted in the process of their coordination. Otherwise, they will have done it. That's how powerful man's choices and decisions are that even God cannot stop man. Man will do what he wants to do. Man will do what he wants to do. That's why you have some people who say, okay, I'm no more a man, I'm a woman. And they go to the hospital and ask the doctors to do a surgical operation on them and give them the organs of a woman even though they were born men. Man will do what he wants to do. Independent of God, whether God likes it or not, that is what we call free will. But for man to make the decision that makes him think he's a woman, somebody influenced that ideology. Somebody influenced him. And such a person is suffering from identity crisis identity crisis you know he rejected you know um his originality and has decided to take on another you know <clears throat> hallelujah 